Welcome everyone. I'm Joe Danger and I will be presenting today on Lean Service Design. No longer do we have to build and hope that there is a demand for our products. We can create demand through services that our customers are utilizing by recognizing the value that is derived through existing use. We still act like we are in a supply-driven economy. A lot of people have focused on the fact that the economic times right now are really bad. What a lot of people are missing is the fact that the world around us has fundamentally changed. What we see now across the world is that we have excess capacity. Many organizations justify improvements by using the word internal customer. In fact, the process at times becomes more important than what the customer values. The other problem is that someone shows how much cost savings they create, how much cycle time they save, how much space they save, when in fact, there was none. If it's not tied to the marketplace, an improvement shown there, why should we do it? I equate it to politicians when they slow down the growth of government spending and proclaim it as a cut in spending. What purpose does creating internal value serve without a demand for utilization? Should value not be perceived and created from an outside-in approach versus an inside-out approach? Is that not what poll is all about? A goods dominant marketing logic arguably limits the mindset for seeing the opportunities for co-creation of value with customers. In a similar way, a transactional exchange view ignores customer loyalty and puts constraints on developing the lifetime value of the customer to the firm. I think it is more about users and the use of the product that determines value. Today's most critical driver of success is usability excellence. Users are our growth engine for our customer base and for our entire organization. Goods dominant logic assumes better, faster, cheaper wins. Best in market products are not enough. Customers pay for how value is derived from the use of the product. Your product or service is relatively unimportant. Even a company like Caterpillar recognizes that it has become their dealer network that provides the value to the customer. Your product could be viewed as just an avatar. It is your services that are primary. Service Dominant Logic, SD Logic, was introduced by Lush and Vargo. They presented the, ca the case to use SD Logic as an organizational foundation versus a total integrative marketing method. The principles of SD Logic cannot be implemented in various silos of an organization, just as the basic principles of Lean cannot. It requires a cultural and fundamental shift within the organization, placing the customer and user experience as the center. Lean viewed through the lenses of a knowledge creation platform serves as the vehicle for implementation of this net logic. SD logic is based on 10 foundational principles, but to highlight just two, Product and services are enablers of value. Value is always determined by the customer. Value in use. It is the use of the product and service that value is derived. I think of value in three ways. Functional, emotional, and social. Thinking of a Ferrari. I use it to drive. That's functional. It makes me feel good, emotional, and what others think. I'm successful. That's social. All provide value, 
but without the latter two, I could have bought a bike. Using this as a guideline, value is embedded in the use of the product rather than the price. Best in market products are just not enough. We need to stop thinking product service markets. We need to stop thinking about how you intended your product service to be used. Instead, we must think how others use our product or service. It's just not about the things we make. It is about how our customers use the things we make. Rolls-Royce developed a leasing plan to offer to aircraft builders. The aircraft engine is paid for through use. Rolls-Royce also handles the service and support of the engine. Zip cars rents cars for use. You only pay for it when you use it. It's a subscription service. Think of Amazon. Kindle is not a product. It is an enabler of use. Jeff Bezos likens Amazon Web Services to Toyota's lean manufacturing methods. Why? They both aim to remove defects closer to the source. We must engage the customer and create demand through our services. This changes the way we think about service, the way we think about business. We are defined by the products we sell, but the services we offer. Many of our service applications are not profitable. The objective of lean service design is to design services as profitable entities or business operating models. We typically think of service as a verb or an activity that is consumed by our customer. We think of service in forms of organizational functions such as engineering, purchasing, accounting. When we set out to improve one of these functions, we look at how we do the work. We focus on our own activity. We focus on defects and waste. The original seven weights, Muda, was defined by Ono, the father of the Toyota production system. These wastes have been often been redefined to better fit applications. One redefinition of service wastes are delays, duplication, unnecessary movement, unclear communication, incorrect inventory, and opportunity loss to retain or win customers, errors in the service transaction. While attacking services from this viewpoint is maybe productive and worthwhile, it totally misses the point in design. If we intend to make services profitable, we must accept that customers do not care how we do our work. They might not even care that we are incompetent at certain functions. The carryover of product thinking that better, faster, cheaper wins is a total misnomer. Improvement for the sake of improvement is totally wasteful. The focus on our own activity encourages internal thinking and misplaces our priorities. You must be committed to continuous improvement as opposed to just doing things and running things as they are. What makes Lean different is the system through SDCA, PDCA, and EDCA. The steps of lean service design are really simple. I can break it down to you go and see the initial practice, Gimba, the user. You form a working vision from the user experience. An ideal situation where the user wants to go is created. Visualize the user's process. If you do that, it is obvious to see what your next reaction should be and when to trigger it. I hope that you take your design, your time to design your own workbook and your own visual management boards. Making this process your own is how the work will be enabled. 
Most people read a book and download the software, the workbook, and try to apply without going through the necessary steps to learn the process. I hope that you have started your experiment, your PDCA cycle, in adding a few of these socks to your toolbox and the way you do your Thank you.